And so let's talk about the future here, Andrew, where the, if, if they're telling us now that it's deficit next year, deeper deficit the year after that, that uh, they've saved us from uh, from the debt of the evil Morrison government. Remember, this is the bloke who, when he was the shadow treasurer, wanted the taxpayer to buy Virgin Airlines, OK? Yeah. Uh, they wanted that to go even deeper, JobKeeper to go forever, all the rest of it right. But still, this government is going to be the one that's going to take us over a trillion. It's going to take us to $1.1 trillion, uh, in the next couple of years. Now, the politics they're, they're going to try to play here is, oh, well... The deficit we said was going to be really bad, but it's only this bad uh, next year or we were able to squeeze it into a surplus. But if the reality of the key economic document that the government has said is 100,000 people lose their jobs and the country's going to owe $1.1 trillion, how does anyone who even wants to hold water for the Labor Party say this is a great document? I know. I mean, it's, it's based... It's the most... A dishonest budget, the craziest budget I've seen forever. Uh, for uh, federal budget, I mean, the Victorian state budget uh, takes some believing too. But federally, this is the most amazing budget I've seen. And it's based on deceit. I mean, to pick up on what Chris is saying, right? Uh, here we've had green policies and there's state and, and federal Labor green policies on global warming have caused power prices to go through the roof. And the government says... To compensate for that idiocy that we have created, we are going to give you $3 billion, that's $300 per purse per household, $300 per household, relief from your power bills of money that we're actually taking from you. I mean, in what, in what mm. universe is it, power, is, is it relief to have money taken from you and then given back to you to yeah. compensate for the extra, even more money that you've had to pay because of this government's errors. And let's not forget the other handout here of the debt relief, which is, uh, what, $1.3 billion more. I mean, the money that they're just chucking out comes... That, that is for low-income people who are struggling to meet their rent. What has caused the explosion in rent? Immigration. Another Labor mistake. Mm -hmm. The immigration, 550,000 people in a single year without building the houses to uh, accommodate them. And so, inter so uh, the mortgages uh, and mortgages have gone up. Uh, uh, sorry. House prices have gone up and also rents have gone up. And to compensate for this labour error, some people are going to get a little help with their rent relief. I mean, seriously. Seriously, it is a con. Fix immigration. Fix your power they won't do policies. It. They, they, this is my point about uh, treating us like hostages, uh, Andrew. It's like they want us all to be dependent on some government handout or some government rebate. And no, rebate no matter how much they punish us with their bad policies, we're supposed to be grateful for the little crumbs they throw back at us of our money. It's outrageous and hopefully and people will start said, to see Chris, through it. But as you said, Chris, right, you know, if I saw some repentance in this budget, I'd say, oh, well, thank heavens have seen the error of their ways. No, uh, they're compensating us, yes, for their global warming policies, but doubling down on them. And in immigration, they say, all right, look, all right, you know, you got us. We're going to halve the immigration rate. When they halve the immigration rate, know this. It'll still be yep. more than double the <laughs> long-term immigration that we've had. It will still be much more than we need. It will still drive prices, rents and house prices through the roof. It will still crowd your cities. I mean, where is the lessons being learned here?